Welcome back guys. Got a good video for you today. Been wanting to do a really comprehensive video on how to clean and polish up metal parts on a dirt bike or really anything for that matter. So whether you've got aluminum, stainless steel or steel, this is the video for you. So there's a couple different ways you can clean up metal. You can give it just a nice clean, simple look or you can do like a brush look or you can go for fully polished and make it look like chrome. So I'm gonna cover all that in today's video. Now the first thing I'm gonna cover is how to clean the part without damaging the metal. Now this particular part is made of aluminum. Now all these steps will be the same for anything made of steel, stainless steel, or aluminum like this. So a product I've found that works really good for cleaning up metal and doesn't damage the substrate itself is a simple green degreaser. Get it at Home Depot or Amazon. So I just mix it 50-50 with water in a spray bottle and it seems to do the trick. So I'll just spray the part down, let it soak for a few minutes, and then just give her a little scrub down and all that should just wipe away. So that degreaser ripped all that dirt and grime off pretty good. Still a little bit of crustiness with scrapes and whatnot. But if you simply just wanna clean up your part and give it a bright shine, a product that works really good as well is this Eagle One uh, cleaning foam. Doesn't work quite as good as the old uh, Magwell cleaner, but still pretty effective. So let's give it a shot. So this stuff, you just spray it on, let it soak for a few minutes, and scrub it around and rinse it off. Looks like it brightened it up pretty good. Now another option for cleaning and shining up metal is vapor blasting, or some people call it wet blasting. It's similar to sandblasting, but you use water with the abrasive, and it works really good at cleaning up, and it leaves a nice shine on the part too. Now I don't have one of those units, but hoping to get one pretty soon. After cleaning this thing up, I realized it's got a coat of paint on it. Looks like a clear coat. Now, typically these don't come from the factory with any sort of paint, but either way, I'm gonna take it to the next level and clean it up on the bench grinder. Should be able to get all of this crustiness off of here. Now, what I'll be using on the bench grinder is this cleaning pad, it's similar to Scotch-Brite, but it's reinforced so that way it doesn't just shred apart. And it's also embedded with abrasive, so it works really well. I'll show you guys. After a few minutes on the bench grinder, got this triple clamp looking pretty sweet. It's actually a ton of fun buffing away like 25 years of crustiness. So what I'm using here is a like a finer pad, finer grit pad. If you were to compare it to sandpaper, I would say it's probably somewhere around four or 500 grit sandpaper. But when you're using it, you wanna be really careful around sharp edges like right here or up near the mounts. If you catch it on that, you'll kind of tear the pad. And then when you're finishing off the part, you wanna work in the same direction to give it a nice consistent look. So say on the back here, you wanna work from one end to the other like that, just so it's not a spotty finish. Now, if you have a part that has some scrapes or wear in it, like this one, we have a little nick right there. On the sides, it's a little bit wavy. And on the front, there's some wear from a cable we can use a more aggressive pad to smooth that out. So what I have here is a little bit more aggressive type pad. So I'll show you what we can do with this. So the coarse pad smoothed out those pits pretty good. Can't really even tell they were ever there. Smoothed out that pit we had over here too well as the cable wear on the front of the triple clamp made it nice and smooth. Now to blend this in with the rest of the clamp, we can go back to the finer pad. Oh, and by the way, this coarse pad is gonna be pretty close to about 120 grit sandpaper. All right, I've got those areas blended in. Turned out super nice, check that out. Now that I've got you guys all sold on what you can do with a buffer machine, let me show you a few options here. So this is the unit I've been using. It is a Balder, I believe it's a three quarter horsepower, two speed. So 3600 RPM and 1800 RPM. 
Super nice unit, it's gonna last you a lifetime, but they are pretty spendy. I believe they're around 800. And so I decided to test a cheaper unit here. This is a half horsepower, a half inch shaft, still with the extended shaft so you can get you know parts in there. Like this one, you got plenty of clearance to work on parts. So anyways, bought this one on Amazon for 60 bucks, paid 30 for the stand, and I've been testing it out for you guys to see if they actually hold up, see if it's a good option. And so far, so good. Like it's been a really solid unit and uh, no issues thus far. So I will link this motor down below for you guys, as well as this one, if you wanna go super heavy duty, just to give you a couple options. Oh, and by the way, the stand for this one was from Harbor Freight. All right, for pads, I've got a couple different options here. Like I said, I have a finer pad and a coarse pad. So this is the coarse pad we're using to smooth out those scratches. And the fine pad is for like a finishing kind of touch to it. So these are eight inch pads. They work really good on a bigger machine like this. And for the smaller machine, I have six inch pads on here. You can run the eight inch pads on here, although with heavy use, the motor might bog down a little bit. And then one thing you can do to make these pads last a little bit longer is stack them on the buffer. So do like two wide or three wide. That'll create a little wider path. And then if you're using them on something like a swing arm like we have here, the finish will actually be a bit more consistent too when you have a little bit more uh, surface area there. So the only difference between the eight inch pads and six inch pads is the six inch pads aren't gonna last quite as long. Obviously with them being smaller, they're gonna wear down quicker. And also these ones are cheaper. So it gets you in the game without investing quite as much. So you can buy these pads as a set with the fine and the coarse, or just individually or packs of three, many different options. So I will link all these pads down below in the description. Now, say if you're working with a part that was super intricate, had a bunch of tight areas that you couldn't get those scotch Brite wheels into, like down here, let me show you what I would do there. So. This is called a Dremel, and it's got a Scotch-Brite attachment on it. Found these little things on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, but they wear out pretty quick, although they do do the trick. Now at this point, the triple clamp looks pretty good. I'd be pretty stoked with it. Just a nice, clean finish, but Believe it or not, there's actually more steps we can take with this. So if you wanna smooth out all these casting lines, like these lines right here, make the clamp look like a billet piece, we can do that with a different product on the buffer. All right, so what we got here is a flap wheel, but this isn't like your grandpa's flap wheel. This thing is pretty sweet. So it's got uh, flaps of sandpaper, which are 80 grit, and then in between each piece of sandpaper is Scotch-Brite. So essentially what this is gonna do is shape the metal. You can smooth out all these lines. These things are pretty freaking sweet. Let me get it on the buffer. So you can see pretty quickly that flap wheel remove the casting line and just smooth this thing out right there. That looks like a billet piece. So I'm going to attack the whole triple clamp get rid of all these casting lines here and just kind of the deformation over time. Now you could remove all the casting lines with the rougher wheel like I did here. Although what I found with that wheel, if you try to do too much with it, you end up with a little bit of a wavy surface. Like if you do the whole clamp, you'll notice it gets a little wavy. Whereas with this wheel, it keeps it really smooth and doesn't uh, warp the surface at all. Man, that flap wheel really smoothed out those casting lines good. Everything looks nice and tidy now. Obviously, you don't wanna to get too crazy in areas like this and start removing too much material. Say if I were to smooth out uh, this piece right here, 
I think that would probably remove too much material and might cause some issues with strength. But just for some light material removal, these flap wheels work pretty good. Now to blend in those areas I just buffed out, I'm gonna use the finer pad to give it that nice shine like we have right here. And just for a little more flexibility, I do have these mini wheels that go on the air grinder. Same concept, it's got Scotch-Brite in between the sandpaper. So it allows you to get in tighter areas like this right here, or if you want to use it on a concentrated area that has like a deep scratch or a scrape like this Kickstarter here, we would be able to use it to blend that out right there. So that only took what, like a minute to do? Pretty quick, smooth it out nice. You can see there's still a little dip right there. Don't want to remove too much material here, just so I don't weaken the Kickstarter. But yeah, that flap wheel ripped right through, smoothed it out, and left a good finish. So this is the point where I would typically stop. I absolutely love the brush look. Hard to beat that, but there's actually a few more things we could do to this to make it look even better. Now, I know we were kind of all over the place when we were prepping this thing, but to rewind and kind of simplify things, to bring it to this point, I would first start with a rough wheel to knock off the, uh, the big edges, the big uh, scrapes and scratches and whatever, then bust out the flap wheel to really smooth it out, give it that nice uniform look, get the rough wheel back on the bench grinder to smooth out the scratches from this wheel, or the flap wheel, and then finally get the fine wheel mounted up and give this thing a nice brush look. So that's pretty sweet looking, but the next step we're gonna go with this is to give it a mirror shine. You might wanna get your sunglasses on for this step, guys. Now keep in mind, before we polish this thing out, we'll need to make sure there's no pits or scratches anywhere. So for example, these ones right here will stick out like a sore thumb once we have this thing all buffed out. So we're gonna use the rough and the fine cleaning wheels to smooth all that out perfectly. All right, we've got her all smoothed out, looking good, ready for the next step. Now, in order to bring this to a mirror shine, we're gonna use a couple different wheels and compounds here. So the first step is a sewn wheel. So it's got uh, sewn, all these sewn sections in it. Pretty stiff wheel. Gonna combine that with a triple E compound. And then for the final step, we're gonna use what's called a loose cotton wheel just a loose section here, along with a white rouge compound. Let's get this stuff on the buffer and see what we can do. This thing is looking pretty sharp, even after just the first stage. Got some uh, rouge still left on there, but yeah, that is beautiful. So now it's on to the second stage. We'll be using the white compound and loose section buffing wheel. So the buffing part's pretty simple. Kind of show you what I'm doing here. So I'm putting the rouge or the compound on the wheel about every 30 seconds or a minute. This thing is getting pretty glazed over. I need to use a rake on it to uh, freshen it back up and then to cut the part or to like smooth it out more aggressively you want to move the part upward against the direction of the wheel and then to shine the part you want to go with the direction of the wheel so that's pretty much all it takes just uh, some elbow grease and a little bit of technique Alrighty guys, we are all finished up with polishing. It's all gooped up with uh, fingerprints and rouge right now. But holy crap, that thing is freaking beautiful. Basically like a mirror. So to finish it off, get all that rouge off of there, I will be using some aluminum polish here by Mothers along with a cotton towel. That should uh, give it a nice little shine and protect it.
We're all done buffing her out. Man, this thing looks freaking sweet. So stoked on how it came out. Definitely not my style to have something chrome like that, but for the sake of this project, it was a lot of fun to bring you guys through the process of transforming an old pile of crap treble clamp, some 25 years old and crusty, into something like this. It's a ton of fun, and I would recommend you guys pick up a set of pads, pick up a set of buffing wheels, whatever it is, and get your hands dirty. It is an absolute blast. And one last thing I was gonna talk about here is protecting the finish. So whether you have something that is polished out like this or the brush look we had earlier, it is important to protect it or do something to maintain that finish. So with this, you can either use a polish, just keep up on it with some others, or do a clear coat. If you have something steel, you're definitely gonna need to clear coat it or uh, protect it somehow or else it'll rust with stainless steel. No worries there, you don't need to protect it or anything. But um, for this, honestly, if I were keeping it this way, I would just leave it bare, keep up on it with mothers. To clear coat it, you're gonna end up with a little bit of haze there. And if it starts chipping off, it's a mess. Now, if you have a brush look, it's easy to keep up on it just with a set of pads. You know, you can just grab a, uh, a pad and touch it up by hand. And besides that, just uh, keep your bike clean and the aluminum will stay in good shape. Oh, and one last thing I was gonna show you guys here, if you have something stainless steel like this, you can easily uh, prep it up like that or do a brush look. So this is the uh, restyle bracket that I sell for the CRs. So this is how it comes from the manufacturer, just kind of a plain rough steel. So I'm gonna take it over to Bench Grinder and show you guys what we can do with it. And this is actually how I prep these brackets to sell them. So you can make stainless look pretty sweet too. After a quick little buff, got a nice brush look to it. And what's nice is this stuff never rusts or corrodes. So that's pretty much it for today's project. I'd be an idiot if I didn't talk to you guys about safety equipment. So you definitely want to wear a respirator, wear some eye protection, wear some gloves, maybe some hearing protection, not completely necessary. And then also, if you're gonna be doing lots of buffing, I would recommend some sort of exhaust system, like a fan or just some sort of ventilation there. Now to wrap up this video, I'm gonna make it easy on you guys and link every single thing we use throughout this video down below in the description. So if you guys want to uh, take on a project like this, it'll be pretty straightforward and you'll know what to buy. So that includes every single buffing wheel, all the compounds, polish, uh, these flap wheels, Dremel, Dremel attachments, safety equipment, every single thing will be linked down below. And a quick heads up, some of the products I use today are from my own company, Prime MX. That includes the cleaning pads and the flap wheels. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. But if you'd like to support the channel, go pick up some of that stuff. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all get out in the shop and get your hands dirty after seeing this one. Honestly, there's no better way to customize your bike and add some personal touch than polishing up some parts and cleaning things up. Besides that, it's, uh, it's pretty cheap to do too. So once again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Keep it prime.